I want you to thank you very much. Go to Hebrews 11 chapter. Because, uh, you know, I'm really dealing with this thing about faith. And this morning, I'm going to talk for the uh, sake of a title. I know I've been sharing many things, but yesterday I, I began to sit, sit down and I started writing and writing and writing. So today I want to talk to you about looking beyond your present. Because there's a lot of you here today, you're stuck. You feel like you're at a dead end. But that's not what God wants you to be. So you have to learn how to look beyond your present situation through the eyes of faith. God has given you and I the ability, watch this, through faith to look beyond what we cannot see. And that's a wonderful thing that I can take my faith and I can look beyond what I cannot see in the natural. Hallelujah. So I want you to go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse number one first. And uh, we're going to go several places. We're going to go several places. Say several. several. Say it again. Several. Yeah, we're going to go several. Say it again. Several. We're going several places. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse number one. Now faith is. Now faith is. If you will notice that now faith is. Notice what? Now faith is. Faith is always in the now. What did I just say? What did I just say? Faith is, always in the now. faith is always in the now. Now faith is. It's not tomorrow. Your faith must be now. Meaning that faith, write this down, is an active force. Very active. It's a very active force. Very active force. Glory to God. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. It's a very active force. Now faith is the substance. Notice what else it says that faith is. Faith is the substance. Not a. It is the. The substance. Most approved. Certain. It is the substance of what? Things that we what? Hope for or long for. Watch this. The evidence of things not seen. I want you to write down a translation of faith right here. Now faith is being sure of what we want and certain that we will get it. By Friday night, I'm going to teach this, that faith is a sure thing. And when you get this, you're going to have no problems trusting God. Now faith is being sure of what we want, certain that we will get it. Now faith is being sure of what we want, and certain that we will get it. That's faith. When the Bible says in Rebecca 2 and 4 that the just shall live by his faith, it literally means when you study it out in the Hebrew that the just shall live by a sure thing. The just shall live by a sure thing. Because when you study the word out, faith, it literally means something that is sure. Something that is certain. My God, I'm teaching, huh? Something that is sure. Uh, some, so watch this. When I got born again and decided to trust God, this was a sure thing. Amen. There should be, I ain't bored with this life. See, if you're bored with it, you don't know it's a sure thing. My life has changed greatly since I've been on this side. Amen. Hallelujah. There's nothing bored about this life. Why? This is a sure thing. Nobody else has promised you, if you trust me, I'll bring it to pass. God has. This is a sure thing. So watch this. When you see, watch this, give and it shall be given unto you, it's a sure thing. When you see, I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee, this is a sure thing. See it? But what, what does he need from us? Believing. God needs you and I to believe him. Hallelujah. Because he is. And he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently see. This is a sure thing. Turn around and tell three people this is a sure thing. Okay, so now when God told, told his people that, watch this, my requirement for you is to live by faith. I want you to live by something that's sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a sure life, okay? Why? God is not a man that he should lie. This is a sure life. Life. Can I tell you something? I ain't never been confused about this walk with God. Why? When you start getting enough fruit and manifestations, it's too late, too late to try to talk me out of this. 
Because when I was on drugs, nothing couldn't help. But when I came to him, I got delivered. So I said, I said, why? What the world couldn't do for me, God did. So I said, this is a sure thing. Hallelujah. Turn around and tell three more people, living by faith is a sure thing. All right, don't take that long, no. Okay, let's go to Hebrews 11 chapter again. Let's stop, let's stop at verse number six. Now watch this, y'all. We're talking about looking beyond the present. Looking beyond the present. And I'm telling you, Lord, help me. Help me right now. Will, you better wake up on that organ because help me right now. I'm about to preach. This message is so good, I'm about to preach, y'all. I was preaching home yesterday. I, I was preaching. Man, I was playing the organ and everything behind me. You know, you have a in, inside your mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you got to look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was having a ball yesterday at home. <laughs> all right. All right. Now watch this. Well, most people, let me say this first. Hebrews 11 chapter verse number six. And we're going to move on because this is good today. Hebrews 11 chapter verse number six. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to satisfy. Another translation says satisfy. When you back up to verse number five in the same chapter, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And watch this, was not found because God had translated him before, watch this, for before his translation, he had this testimony. I was reading this in another translation. His testimony was that he satisfied God. He satisfied God with faith. And watch this. And because he satisfied God with faith, he didn't see death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say no faith, no faith, no access. No access. Come on, say it again. No faith, no access. And the only reason why we're coming back to faith, we're not seeing certain things. Watch this. It's because we got a believing problem. Hallelujah. Now watch this, watch this. God instructs you to do just the opposite of what the world will tell you to do. Watch this. When you're going through, God say, get happy. But you won't. But the Bible says when you fall, watch this, into divers of temptation, watch, watch the prescription God gives you. He said, count on joy, but you won't move. Say no faith, no, faith. no, access. no access. Come on, say it again. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. My body's a little taxed. Okay, let the weak say we are strong. See the prescription that God gives you? It's totally different. Watch this. He said, let the weak say we are strong, but you won't say nothing. But you keep telling them I'm tired. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hmm. To walk with God is to agree with God. And to agree with God is to say what he said. Hallelujah. And then watch this, act upon it. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says we're the heal, right? By his stripes we are. Stop saying you're sick. Watch this, why? But that's the reality. There's another reality called healing. See, we won't do what the word says do. Watch this. And then when we meet people that's telling us only what the word says, we get mad with them because they don't want to hear our pity party. Right. Come on, let me talk to you. The Bible says, watch this, watch this, be strong in the, and in the, so we got to be strong in who? And in the, so we got to be strong in, so when you feel like you're going through something, what should be your confession? I am in the Lord and in the, you see it? You have to do something. Turn around and tell somebody, you got to do something. Yes. Say, and it starts with your mouth. Yes. See it? It starts with your mouth. I'm convinced. Let me say this to you. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that, watch this, we're saying too much of the wrong thing. That's why it takes so long to get the service going. Because yes. y'all don't have no praise life at home. That's right. That's right. Amen. 
Some of y'all haven't praised God since last Sunday. But see, if you practice living this way, you just bust one for the Lord anytime. Hallelujah! Now watch this, watch this, watch. Some of y'all, some of y'all attitude is greater than your God. Because you come up here with an attitude and you don't change it. You pamper it. And everybody know it because you can see it on yourself. You pamper that attitude. You pamper what you've been through. No, I'm going to give God a praise. My God. Why? Because praise affects my attitude. Come on, shout, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Ain't nobody got time to be asking you what's going on, looking sad. You need to look like you know the king. Come on, you need to look like you know the king. And then you need to look like the greater one is in you. Can y'all handle this today? Come on, give God a shout. So the word of God is our prescription. Well, I, 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 I got this headache. At some point in time, you're going to have to focus on God. Because now you're dealing with two realities. Yeah, I like when y'all look at me like that. You're dealing with two realities. The one you feed the most is the one you're going to live in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I ain't getting no sleep all. So you, that becomes the excuse why you don't give God praise. And he never sleeps. See, he, he never sleeps nor slumbers. I'm showing you on something. Our attitude has to change when it comes to walking by faith. Hallelujah. Pastor, but you don't understand. You know, I don't get paid for another two weeks. And based on what I can see, that's the problem. I'm going there now. Based on what I can see. So watch this. Because of what you can't see, watch this. You're going to start. Watch this. You're going to let that affect your praise to God. Instead of thanking him for what you already have. And watch this. He's brought you this far. So why would he leave you now? He never left you before. You still here, you still alive. So that's some sign, some indication that God's been taking care of you. Come on, come on, let's give him praise right now. Come on, let's give him praise right now. See, some of y'all want to be pampered in the flesh, but you got to get in the spirit. Hallelujah. God cared so much about you. Watch this. He prepared your life before he brought you here. And the only thing you really got to do is give him praise. Because he is a way maker. Oh, I said he is a way maker. I said he is a way maker. Okay, so the Bible says that he who comes to God, watch this, must believe. This is important. You must believe. You can't get around that. You can't get around that. Yes, God is a God of compassion, but you're not called to live by compassion. Yes, God is a God of mercy, but you're not called to live by mercy. Yes, God is a God of grace, but you ain't called to live by grace. The just shall live by faith. Well, you know, God is sovereign. Well, sovereignty comes, watch this, if you don't know him, but the Bible doesn't say you shall live by his sovereignty. What makes it sovereign? Seasons are, I don't have to believe God for the summer, it's coming. But when the summer get here, I got to believe something. You see it? I don't have to believe God, watch this, because seasons are going to come. But when the season come, I got to believe God, there's some fruit out there for me. Y'all would open your mouth and shout. So it, it all goes back to faith. The just shall live by faith. So, okay, now watch this. Watch this. So I got to learn the importance of taking my faith, watch this, and lifting my eyes up off of my present. Write this down if you're taking notes. One of the abilities that God gave to man was to believe. 
God gave you and I the ability, watch this, to believe beyond what we cannot see. He gave you and I the ability to believe beyond what we cannot see. Glory to God, y'all better shout. He gave me the ability to believe what I cannot see beyond it. Beyond it. I got beyond, watch this, beyond. Okay, so watch this. When it looks like I'm stuck in a rut, I can take the law of lift with faith. Lift my eyes up off of that situation. And I can see far beyond what is presently before me. Y'all better open your mouth and shout. So that's the place that God wants us to get to. You know why you get frustrated? Because you can't see. The only reason that you get frustrated because you can't see. The only reason you won't praise God is because you can't see. The only reason why you won't make the right confession is because you can't see. Hallelujah. You are so bound by, watch this, the natural. You can't even see through the eyes of faith. But you got to make a decision. God, I'm going to trust you. I can't see this right now, but you know. So, Lord, I'm going to see that's where it all starts. It all starts with faith. For the just shall live by faith. Can we give God a shout of praise? <laughs> so God has given me the ability to look beyond what I cannot see through the eyes of faith. Look at 2 Corinthians. My God, it's teaching time. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians. You know, I'll be meeting people, right? I be seeing people, some, some of the folk, our folk. I'm like, you know, I ain't seen you, you know, a little minute. We've been, I'm going through. So you couldn't see. Amen. That's why you stopped coming to church. Amen. It's quiet up in here right now. Amen. So you couldn't see. Amen. See it? No matter what state I'm in, watch it. I got to be able to see God. Amen. Amen. Now watch this in 2 Corinthians. Am I doing all right? I'm just laying a foundation because if you take a notes, take these notes now. Watch this. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse number 18. It says, while we look not at the, the things that are seen. Write this down. Here's a footnote. Satan works overtime on the imagination. I'm going to deal with this because faith affects your imagination. Satan works overtime. He'll get you imagining the wrong thing, thinking somebody don't care about you, thinking somebody talking about you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Person be person be sitting next to you, and their eyes just happen to be glancing at you, thinking about something, and you think they're looking at you funny. <laughs> Satan works overtime. Why? He wants to, watch this. He wants to intrude your faith life. When Jesus was hung, uh, on the fast 40 days, Satan affected his imagination. He was trying to, rather. Amen. That's what he's attacking, your imagination. Watch this, your thought life. Yes. Because the mind is the battleground for Satan. Yes. It's the battleground. So faith affects our thinking. I'm telling you, I'm seeing this. Thing. It affects our thinking. Watch this, that's why atmosphere is hearing the right thing. Come on, somebody. You can't be home watching Freddy Krueger, walking dead, talking dead. You're going to be scared. That's right. See it? You're going to be scared. Why? Because it's what you're seeing. It's what you're hearing. It's what's being said. It's affecting your soul. Faith affects your soul. You need to hear this, man. These messages that we preach and teach, it affects your soul. And that's where this stuff get at. It gets deep down in your consciousness, your subconsciousness. Come on, somebody. It affects your soul. Hallelujah. Wherewithal shall a young man, watch this, cleanse his ways, thereto by taking heed to thy word. If this stuff is going to get out of our soul, we got to sit up on the word. Y'all better say amen. Amen. Now, Now, watch this. So he says, he says, while we look not at the things that are seen. But the things, at the things, but at the things, but at the, which are, okay, okay. He's saying, watch this, can I say this to you? Can I say this? Everybody, can I say this to you? I need y'all to talk to me. (laughs) Lift your hand, no, I'm just teasing. (laughs) Okay, okay, can I say this to you? Stop looking at lack. 
Stop looking at I don't have enough. Am I teaching? Stop looking at why says, how am I going to get through this? Am I teaching? He says, watch this, while we look not at the things that are what? But we got to look at the things that are? Okay, go to 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter. We're coming back. We got to look at the things that are not seen. So watch this, we got to look at the eternal. My God, I'm teaching. Stop looking at who left your life and start looking at who's coming. Stop looking at what you lost and start looking at what you're gaining. My God, I'm teaching. See, that's where the devil gets you in a rut. Now, watch this. Say, there's more to God. Come on, say it again. Now, watch this in 1 uh, Timothy, the sixth chapter, in verse number 17. Can I teach like I want to? Yes. All right, all right, all right. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not what? High-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things. That's what you need to be looking at right there. Amen. Don't look at the things that are seen. Amen. Hmm. Look at spiritual things. Look at spiritual things. What does the word say? Pastor, they said no way. All things are possible with God. Look at that. Get your butt out the way and look at God. But Pastor, I know this. Oh, so you know more than God. So now you the only wise God. No, you only know what you know because that's what they taught you. We know too much about man and not enough about God. It's good to know things, but the th- when the things you know, watch this, are affecting, watch this, your belief system, you need to let that go and trust God. So what are we to look at? Look at that. God has given me richly all things. So don't look at lack. Look at prosperity. Well, pastor, you know, then they just said, you know, they gave up on me. They said, I'm in my final stages. Don't look at that. Look at by his stripes. We are healed. When Mary and Martha and Jesus went down to the tomb, they looking at how long he been there. Come on now. By this time, he's stinking. They're looking at the wrong thing. You got to start looking at miracles. You got to start looking at God. You got to start looking at the supernatural. You got to start looking at restoration. Lord, by this time, he's stinking. You're looking at the wrong thing. Didn't I say I'm going to raise him up? Come on, open your mouth and shout. Didn't I say he's sleeping, but I'm going to wake him up? Why are you still paying attention to the natural? Look at the spiritual, man. The only way you're going to come out of this thing, you got to look right. David said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. When everything's dried up down here, my help comes from the Lord. When that's dried up, my help. See, y'all, we're looking at the wrong thing. Sit down. Now y'all can understand me better. He seemed like he can't see what's going on. I ain't looking at that. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Ten thousand at my right hand, but it ain't coming to me. Why? I ain't paying attention to that. That's not my focus. My God, you got to take your eyes off of defeat and start seeing victory. You got to take your eyes off of confusion and see peace. 
Come on, you got to take your eyes off of sadness and start seeing joy. Come on, it's time to look me up. Come on, look, 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 look. Stop looking at your past and see your bright future. You got a bright future, but you got to see it through the eyes of faith, and your ladder will be greater than your former. We look at the wrong thing. Stop looking at discouragement and disappointment and start seeing God. See God turn that thing around for you. Come on, God dare you to jump on your feet and give God a shout of praise. Sit down. Sit down. We're looking at the wrong thing. Y'all getting this? Mary said, Lord, he told the angel, how shall this thing be? Seeing. You're looking at the wrong thing. Faith is taking your eyes and taking a snapshot of eternity. Thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. We pray that it's been a blessing to you and has helped you in overcoming your world. For more information about World Overcomers Ministries, give us a call at 843-746-9536 or log on to our website at www.womcc.com. It's time for a supernatural invasion of God's presence, power, and glory. Make plans to attend the 2018 Overcomers Convention, June 13th through the 15th at the Charleston Area Convention Center. For more information, call 843-746-9536. We invite you to join World Overcomers Ministries at our 6060 Rivers Avenue, North Charleston campus for a faith-building experience like never before, Sundays at 9.30 a.m. and Wednesday and Fridays at 7 p.m. Stay connected with us by visiting our website at womcc.com. You can also log on to the official World Overcomers Ministries Facebook page, as well as visit our YouTube channel.